Welcome to section 5.1, part 2, for polynomial functions. For this video, I want to focus on graphing polynomial functions. Now, we've already done this every time we graphed quadratics. Uh, quadratics are all polynomial functions. And quadratics have turning points, and they have end behavior, so these terms are not new. But we're going to apply them to, po to polynomial functions other than those of degree 2. So let's get started. Turning points. Those are the points where the graph changes direction. Now, in behavior is the direction of the graph at the left and the right ends. Okay, so let's say, for instance, we have this polynomial, x squared plus 5x oh, plus 9. Okay, now this is going to start off as a review problem. Our a value is 1, b we know is 5, and c is 9. And if you remember, we said when a is 1, or whenever your leading coefficient, in this case it would be our a value, when that is positive, then our end behavior is going to be up, up. Or the concavity will be concave up. Whoops, let's erase that. So that graph, we know, will look something like this. It's going to be concave up, okay? Now, we do notice right here, that vertex, that is a turning point. Our graph is decreasing from left to right because we're drawing, as we draw the graph, our pencil is going down. So that is a decreasing part. And then as soon as we hit that vertex, well, what happens? It goes back up. So then we say we're increasing on this side. So this vertex, that value right there, is a turning point. And in fact, all turning points are going to occur at minimums or maximums. Okay? Okay, let's start by talking about some parent functions. Um, and the first one is a review function. It's y equals x squared. Okay, so we have our graph. And of course, it's a degree 2, which means it's a, par a parabola. And we know that the vertex here is at 0, 0. So 0, 0 is a turning point. And in fact, 0, 0 is the minimum value. We know that our parabola is decreasing when we start. So we want to say it's decreasing from negative infinity up to zero. And we're talking about, when we say negative infinity and zero, we're referring to the x values. And then after when x is zero, our graph starts to increase. So it's increasing from zero to infinity. And of course, since it's a positive x squared, so the leading coefficient's positive, we know that our end behavior is up, up. Okay? Now the next parent function I want to talk about is y equals x cubed. So that graph is going to look like this. It, it too is also going to pass through 0, 0. But 
on this particular parent function, there is no turning point. There is no minimum or maximum. In fact, this graph is going to be increasing along the whole inter interval. So we say from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the end behavior, it is down and then up. Down on left, up on right. So we say the end behavior is down, up. Let's take a look at a specific example. So if you have a graphing calculator handy, why don't you go ahead and pull it out. And I want you to graph y equals 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 5x minus 7. And if you don't have a graph, that's okay. We know that the a, or the leading coefficient, is positive. So we can assume then that our end behavior should be down up. If our leading coefficient was negative, the end behavior would be switched up down. You might notice from the graph that it's going to look something like this. Okay, if you have a third degree polynomial, then at most you will have two turning points. And our graph here has two turning points. This part is increasing. So we look at we look to find where that turning point is, and that'll tell us from where it's increasing. So in this case it'd be negative infinity to whatever this x value is. And then we notice that from, and by the way, I should back up and say that this is a maximum value, and this one is a minimum. And remember, all turning points occur at minimums and maximums. So between the maximum value and the minimum value, we are decreasing. And then from the minimum value on up, we are increasing again. So again, if you have a third degree polynomial, at most you'll have is two turning points. And also, notice the end behavior. We have an odd degree and our end behavior is um, not the same. So it's down, up, or it could be up, down. When we had x squared, we had up, up, or we knew it could be down, down. And that's going to be a repeating um, characteristic, as we'll see. Okay, another parent function is y equals x to the fourth. So the general shape of this will look like, like that. Okay, and if you have a fourth degree polynomial, and most you'll have here is three turning points. And again, that's at most. Also, take a look at our end behavior. Our leading coefficient is positive, so we are at positive x to the fourth, which means our end behavior is going to be up, up. If it was negative, if we had a negative leading coefficient, then it would be down, down. All even powers work the same way. x squared, x to the fourth, the end behavior will be the same. The last parent function that I want to talk about is y equals x to the fifth. So that would look something like this. Could look something like this. And here you notice that we have one, two, three, four. At most, four turning points. And since our leading coefficient, if it is positive, then our end behavior will be down up. If our leading coefficient is negative, then our end behavior will be up down. Okay, so we're going to start with example three. We're going to graph this function and we're going to determine the, tur determine the turning points and the end behavior. So we notice that we have a degree four, 
All right. So if we have a degree 4, that means we should have, at most, three turning points. We also notice that our leading coefficient is 4. So it's positive, which means our end behavior is going to be up, up. Okay, so you would pull out your graphing calculator, and I already have these for us. It's going to look something like that. That's not the exact look, um, but it gives us a general place to start. All right, now to find these values, because if you notice, we have a minimum value here. We have a maximum value right about there. And we have one more minimum. So we do end up with three turning points. We need to find the x coordinates of where those minimums, maximums, and occur at. All right, so we notice that we are um, decreasing from here to here. And then we go up and we increase. We decrease again. And we go up and we increase our last time. We should be able to find the intervals in which this occurs. From what to what? are we decreasing? Well this one's pretty easy, you know, from negative infinity in this value right here is negative 1.07 for the x-coordinate. This one is negative 0.27 and our last minimum is 0.22 so as you can see, my crap is off a little bit. So we would actually, if we had to go through and give this much detail, we would say that we are decreasing from negative infinity, take a negative 1.07, and we increase from negative 1.07, approximately, these are rounded, to negative 0 0.27. And then we decrease from negative 27 hundredths, to positive 22 hundredths, and then we increase again from 22 hundredths to infinity. Now to find where these values might occur, we would look in our calculator, and you'd have to go to calc feature, and you'd want to look for maximums and minimums. All right, what I want you to do next is I want you to try example 3b on your own. See if you can come up with those minimums and maximums and where your turning points are going to occur, okay? And we're going to check it and go over it tomorrow or the next class day.